everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. So I know I was going to do part two of making the snowballs and I have started that and I meant to get the video out to you guys earlier, like yesterday, but the war department called. That would be uh, my son and the local undertaker. <laughs> yes, we are friends with the local undertaker. Everybody needs masks. They need the fabric masks to be able to go out. And my son, there goes my dog. My son is a pastor in Colorado. And Colorado just put the word out that if you're going to be out and about in public, you need to be wearing a fabric mask. So he called and asked if I would make them. And I told him no problem. So I made some for him, his wife, the three grandchildren. And before that, the undertaker called, and he's got five funeral homes in the area, and none of his funeral directors have masks. And so I made some with the ties and some with elastic. So now I'm out of elastic. But, you know, hey, duty calls, right? Plus I made one for me, one for my husband, so that way we've got masks as well. I lined mine with a layer of non-fusible, non-woven interfacing. I have a bolt of it. And so I made some of that along the way. Hi, Harley. How you doing, baby girl? <laughs> it's raining here, y'all. The dogs do not want to be outside at all. So, hi, sweet girl. All right, so I have started, look at her little tail in the background <laughs> wagon. She's a happy dog. You're such a sweet baby. Yeah, you're a good girl. I had told y'all that I was going to put their my grandchildren's names on the back of these snowballs. Well, I decided mom and dad need to be in on the fun as well. So I'm actually going to make them sets of snowballs as well. And so that's a total of 30 snowballs I have to make. That's a lot. Now, I have a multi-needle. I have a Janome uh, seven needle, the MB7. I've got that. And what I did was I decided to do some embroidery in multiples. So here is the hoop for the Janome. It's got these little grips on the side that slide in underneath that, you know, underneath where the, the, the needles are. And I'm going to show you on my laptop what I did in Embrilliance Essentials to set up so I could do three of them at one time. So let me show you how they turned out. Hello, sweet blue. Yeah, you're a good girl. So here are the three. See, it says Callie. That's for my granddaughter, and I did it in pink. Okay. So here are, there's three of them, and I did three at a time. Now, if you guys are going to do this as well, even if you don't have a multi-needle, if you have a machine that can do a 9 by 14 hoop, you can do this. Okay, so even if you don't have a multi-needle, let's say you have a 9 by 14 hoop, this is a, oh, it's the 200 by 240 millimeter, so it's an 8 by 9-ish, thereabouts, okay? If you have a 9 by 14 hoop, you can do three at a time as well, or even four if you wanted to get them in there. I'm going to show you how to do that here in a minute. But I also want to show you a little trick about how to really conserve your stabilizer. This is tearaway stabilizer, medium weight tearaway stabilizer. I'll put a link to it below. And I'm also going to put a link below to the Designs and Machine Embroidery Hoop Mat. This is a silicone hoop mat. It is on sale right now for $19.99. I'll put a link below to this. I absolutely love this thing. It is a game changer when it comes to hooping uh, your, uh, your, when you're doing anything in the hoop at all. You're going to absolutely love this. I've got this stabilized and you can see where the holes are. That's where I tore off the little orange peel slice of felt. You can almost see Callie's name, see where it was torn out. To do another set of three, I don't have to use a whole nother piece of stabilizer. So a real cool way to conserve stabilizer when you're doing multiples like this, and you know only a little bit is going to be torn out. There's still a lot of very good usable stabilizer in here. And so I have a strip, okay, of more stabilizer. 
and I'm going to take some scotch tape and I'm just going to tape it right over the holes. So look here, can you see where that cellophane tape is right there? Now, where the pencil marks are, that is where I am going to use and I am going to put more of these felt pieces, okay? So I'm going to put them on just like this so that the tips meet on the pencil marks, just like that. Let me show you. What I normally do is I will take a little bit of 505 and I'm just going to spray it right on where those pencil marks are. That just helps everything stay in place. And what I do is I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to fold it in half, okay? And I'm going to put it, I can see the line that I drew, the crosshair that I drew from before. I'm going to fold it in half and put it on there. And I've got the bottom tip right here. I'm just going to fold this up to the top tip, just like that. Do that again. See, this is a really good way to make sure you don't waste a whole lot of stabilizer. This hooping is great. I don't need to rehoop a whole nother piece. When this gets finished, okay, on the back, the only, there's a little bit of stabilizer under the stitches. There's a little tiny piece here in the C, but, but that's it. I mean, there's nothing there. So it's not a big deal to reuse the stabilizer for this. I'm going to show you. We're going to go to the big machine. Okay, so I am just going to insert my hoop like this. And I want to, I have pink in thread number three. So I'm just going to start this over and it's ready to go. Because I've got the green button here, I'm just going to green. And it machine starts to run and it tells me the hoop and I tell it okay. And there it goes. here we are we're all done you guys this took five minutes okay so this is going to be a lot easier but look at this now when I go to pull it up so the the 505 didn't I didn't have to pin it or anything but the 505 held it in place good enough for the embroidery machine to do its thing and when I pull it off see that there's hardly any on there at all just a little bit in the C just like before okay so I'm going to pull these off do this one all right and now I'm going to take away this piece of stabilizer I'm going to put another piece on here and I'm going to continue to do this until I have names for all snicks <laughs> snick snowballs till I have names for all six snowballs so even if I wasn't using the multi needle if you have a machine that has a 9 by 14 hoop you can do the same thing you can do two or three of these at a time and I'm now the pattern itself is designed for a 4 by 4 hoop so if you want to do one at a time you certainly can but you don't have to so since I have to make 30 snowballs I am going to use the multi needle and I will probably do a 9 by 14 as well on the luminaire that I am using courtesy of all brands so I want to encourage you guys to do that. I'm going to show you now how I'm going to set, how I set all that up in, in Brilliance Essentials. Okay, so this is the very first uh, screen you get when you get into in Brilliance Essentials. And if you want to change your hoop, you will go to Edit and Preferences, 
and this is where you can change your hoop so you can choose whatever you have if i'm using my baby lock or my brother i choose pes and because the genome uses a jeff file i change to jeff and it gives me like there's the genome m2 hoop um the one that i was using is the 200 by 240 that's right here about a nine by eight i tell it apply and okay and there it is right there so the easiest way i decided to do this is if you click the a i want to put their name in there so i'm going to click the a and when that happens you get an abc right in the middle well if you come over here to the text box now this text box showed up because i clicked that a so i'm going to highlight over that and I'm going to type in now I'm going to type in uh, Aiden's name A-I-D-E-N and hit enter and you can see that there's Aiden right there now this is a default font that comes with in Brilliance Essentials and so we have it right here well I'm going to choose this and I am going to turn it 90 degrees so that it is now vertical okay it's perfect when you do this so here here is zero okay so you can see the grid here is zero you can change it to metric if you want i am going to use my arrow keys and i'm going to move this over to the minus three inch point and center it i'm kind of centering the little uh black boxes in the middle on the three and i am going to hover my cursor over it and right click and copy and i'm going to click off of it and right click and paste there it is i'm going to move it over to the middle that is centered click off right click and paste there it is again i'm going to move it all the way over to the other three inch line. See that right there, that three inch line? So now I have Aiden's name three times and it's going to fit on those lines that I have in that hoop. And look here, we have letters, letters, letters. And you can tell when you click on them, there's the one on the far left, there's the middle, there's the right. And over here, it's got a lilac. It doesn't matter. You can use whatever color you want. We are ready to go and do this for Aiden. So I'm going to cut two more strips of stabilizer and put them into the hoop that I already have marked and then save it to a USB stick and take it to the machine. I'm going to go ahead and rehoop another piece of stabilizer so you can see exactly how to do this. What I normally do is I just put it out like this and lay a hoop on it and then take a rotary cutter and I just cut it maybe an inch bigger all the way around. And I'm gonna hoop this. It doesn't really matter um, that it, you know, that it's not perfectly centered, it does not, it doesn't matter in this case on this one. Now, <clears throat> this hoop mat. The reason I like this hoop mat is one, your hoop does not move around. I mean, the, the mat will move before the hoop moves on this. If I try to hoop something in here, this slides, okay? It will not slide on this hoop mat. I also like this hoop mat because it has a very, very dark crosshair in the middle. So this is where I can see there are little uh, nubs sticking up right here that are the horizontal line. I can see the line through the mat. I'm just going to make a mark like this so I know where that is in the stabilizer. And then I have marked center on this mat. I put a little dark mark on there myself. And I'm going to make sure that that is straight as well. Okay, so now <clears throat> I have a cross mark 
on here. There's grids and all kinds of stuff you can use, but now if you recall on my computer screen, so I'm going to put the name vertically in the center. I'm also going to do a three inch away and I can see the lines. I don't know if you can, but I can see the lines through the mat, uh, through the stabilizer. So I'm going to go one, two, three, right here. There's that three. I'm just going to make a mark and I'm going to come this way and go one, two, three. And I'm going to make a mark. So now I know this is how I figured out to fold it in half, put it on the center, and put the tip at the bottom and put the other tip at the top. Okay, you guys, I hope that was helpful. Um, in the next episode, I'm going to show you how I am going to embroider the funny faces in multiples. All right? We'll talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.